Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Polaris Dawn mission set to launch July 31st in SpaceX Dragon. Canadians coming out to Oshkosh to celebrate RCAF's 100th. Historic European tour ends as That's All Brother returns home. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Polaris Dawn mission set to launch July 31st in SpaceX Dragon. Polaris Dawn is the first of the Polaris program, a series of three planned space missions all funded and commanded by Jared Isaacman, the billionaire founder of Shift 4. The privately funded mission is slated to be launched July 31st. SpaceX has announced it will provide the launch capability with its Falcon 9 rocket and the Dragon crew capsule. The upcoming flight will be the first ever to feature a commercial astronaut extravehicular activity or spacewalk. The astronauts will use SpaceX spacesuits adapted from the suits used inside the capsule and provide greater mobility, novel thermal management tiles, and a helmet with state-of-the-art heads-up display and camera. It will be Isaacman's second spaceflight, and the other crew members include the pilot Lieutenant Colonel USAF retired Scott Kid Poteet, with Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon, SpaceX operations engineers serving as mission specialists. The spacecraft will be launched to an altitude of about 800 miles above Earth, the highest any crew has been since the Apollo missions to the moon. The crew is scheduled to spend five days in orbit with these objectives. High altitude flight, first commercial EVA, in-space communications using Starlink laser-based system, and conduct research to advance knowledge of human health during future long-duration spaceflights. After the break, Brits take issue with public image in wake of eco-vandalism. fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. There's a lot of places I get to at the end of the runway or in turnarounds that I need an engine running. So to me, it's very important to have a product that I'm absolutely confident with. I am very confident with the Trailblazer propeller. And when I'm flying air shows, I know that propeller's gonna be right for me. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Brits take issue with public image and wake of eco-vandalism. The British Business and General Aviation Association has responded to displays of aircraft vandalism by Just Stop Oil activists. A pair of eco-terrorists had broken into Britain's Stansted Airport in order to hose down jets parked there. Ostensibly, they wanted to target the private aircraft of Taylor Swift, which was absent at the time. Instead, they were able to spray down two jets with fire extinguishers filled with orange paint. The move, as usual, ranked aviationists at home and abroad, leading the British Business and General Aviation Association to create their Did You Know? campaign. NASA crew completes first simulated Mars mission. NASA is gathering important baseline data and information that will help guide planning for the first human crewed mission to Mars through its crew health and performance exploration analog ground-based missions. The first of three such missions in the Mars Dune Alpha habitat came to an end July 6th when the volunteer crew emerged from the habitat after a year-long test of living and working in an isolated environment. The habitat is a 3D printed structure built to resemble an actual habitat that would be constructed and used on Mars. Air Force KC-46A Pegasus completes 46-hour circumnavigation. 
A Boeing KC-46A with the 22nd Air Refueling Wing at McConnell AFB completed a 45-hour circumnavigation to establish a new record for maximum endurance operations in the Air Force's Air Mobility Command. The mission, called Project Magellan, required two additional K-46s at Anderson Air Force Base in Guam and two KC-135 Stratotankers at Mildenhall, UK, and a U.S. Central Command location as well as two backup KC-135s from the 100th Air Refueling Wing at RAF Mildenhall and the Utah Air National Guard. USAF opens Warrant Officer Training School once again. The Warrant Officer is returning to the force after being dissolved in 1958. The rank is coming back to help the Air Force close a troubling gap where some roles demand considerable training and expertise without the more lengthy process of fostering a dyed-in-the-wool officer. It will likely be used for those in the infotech side of the force's capabilities. Warrant officers will be trained at a school in the Gene M. Holmes Center for Officer Accessions and Citizen Development at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Canadians coming out to Oshkosh to celebrate RCAF's 100th. The Royal Canadian Air Force is celebrating its 100th anniversary at AirVenture this month, bringing out the whole kit and caboodle of the Canadian Performing Fleet. That means they'll have the headlining Snowbirds equipped with their CT-114 Tudors, a license-built Cessna T-37 Tweed, riding along with their CF-18 Demo Squadron and a rare appearance from their World War II bomber, the Avro Lancaster Mark 10. It's a nice chance for fans of the neighbors up north to see their best work, since the teams are coming out in force for the Canadian Air Force Centennial. A new livery will be displayed by one of their CF-188 Hornets across the U.S., U.K., and Canada under Operation Inspiration 2024. AirVenture attendees can watch the Canadians perform during afternoon air shows on July 26, 27th, and 28th. One of their native de Havilland Twin Otters will be on hand to open the national anthem by dropping the Canadian Armed Forces Parachute Demo Team Skyhawks. The Snowbirds will close the shows during each performance. A bigger display will take place with the CF-18 as a victory flight with a few more Canadian aircraft. Their Lancaster will make an appearance in the July 27th night show, accompanying both flying B-29s at the show for a display of Allied air power. After these messages, historic European tour ends as That's All Brother returns home. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated an even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com Welcome back. Historic European tour ends as That's All Brother returns home. That's All Brother, the CAF famous Douglas C-47 Skytrain, the military version of the civilian DC-3 transport, has returned to its home base at San Marcos Regional Airport in Texas. The aircraft has been on an extended journey touring Europe and participating in numerous commemorative events and reenactments, marking the 80th anniversary of D-Day and the 75th anniversary of the Berlin Airlift. The aircraft also took part in educational programs highlighting the D-Day invasion of Normandy on June 6, 1944, which began the liberation of Europe from under Nazi control. As many people are no doubt aware, That's All Brother was the lead aircraft in the vanguard of the invasion forces, leading the way for the hundreds of formations flying over the armada of ships crossing the English Channel. In Normandy, France, many commemorative events were held in which That's All Brother was a central player. Those included commemorative flights over the beaches of Normandy, flights with paratroopers in World War II era uniforms performing reenactment jumps, and a flight over Omaha and Utah beaches carrying five veterans of that action. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.